Hello everyone. So <clears throat> I was looking at this question on the community and uh, this question is uh, this question is about uh, a workflow, a release management uh, workflow or a release management uh, process that uh, Alex is trying to create in Jira and uh, I wanted to talk about this first and uh, I wanted to also talk about uh, how your uh, thought process should be if you are let us say trying to use a tool like Jira for mapping your own process. Now workflow feature in Jira is actually quite powerful and uh, people actually use Jira and like Jira for this feature, this feature of uh, workflows. Jira is a workflow engine in a way. So the question is uh, I'll not really read the whole question, but the question is that uh, Alex is trying to do release management in Jira. Basically, they have a process already or something similar, and they want to explore how Jira can be used. Now, what Alex mentioned here in the post that uh, uh, they tried uh, using uh, some of the templates, JSM templates. And if you remember, I made a, like a video recently about uh, templates in Jira. So, the, so, so my video was uh, about uh, how Jira templates can be used, but but at the same time, these Jira templates are uh, in a way. Uh, I mean, you you can definitely get started with Jira with these templates, but you don't have to limit yourself to those templates. That actually is a bit bit confusing, and it is not always clear. And I think Atlassian should do something about it. Like there should be a way uh, when you create a new project. When you select those templates, I think there should be like a message that you you can always modify those templates, uh, or some something something similar. So, so what I'm trying to say is that you can always uh, use your own uh, customized workflow and uh, look at the templates, but don't really follow those those templates if uh, if those templates are not really matching your requirements, because you can definitely do what you are indeed doing in your organization. So when it, when it comes to, let us say a process, now a process, I, I mean, I'm not very rigid about uh, how you should define your uh, process, like the definition. It, it's more about uh, a discussion, just uh, talk to people. For example, if you are a consultant or if you are, let us say, responsible for deploying Jira or using Jira for a new process like release management, then talk to those individual uh, stakeholders or people who are responsible for release management. So uh, if in your release management, you do some planning and then you do some, let us say, testing and then you test it on, test it on staging environment and then you agree on a date and then you approve it and then you release it and then you do post release uh, documentation, whatever. So basically in, in every organization, there is a process, some kind of a process and you, it is not really complicated. It can be just a bullet points or you can draw it somewhere maybe use a process flow diagram or maybe use Excel sheet, whatever works for you, to be honest, that is not really important. I think if, even if you draw something like a, I think drawing is always good, uh, like on, on a piece of paper or maybe use uh, Confluence or Word or Excel, whatever works. But uh, apart from the flow, uh, because when you map your process in Jira, you have to basically define uh, or figure out what would be the status of that particular item. For example, if you're leaving something, let us say it's a release ticket, right? That, okay, we have a, a delivery and we are going to release it on a specific date or maybe sometime in future, then it is a, an item in Jira, right? An issue. Now, the, the issue is always in one of those states. For example, if you look at the workflow on the right-hand side, we have this, uh, this, this workflow where uh, we have the different states and these different states are something that you can define. And when you are working on your... Uh, process, make sure you you have written it, written it down somewhere that these are the states that I have or these are the states for my issue or my requirement ticket, whatever. And also figure out and, and get clarity on what will happen at each of these stages. Uh, do you want to capture something for sure? Do you want to limit who can proceed, who, who has the authority to proceed further? For example, if you're in your process, I can see Alex is saying that there is an approval process for release. So someone will approve it, right? So maybe in your workflow, you can uh, have like approval stage 
that okay now we are waiting for approval for, for example in this case it says uh, uh, awaiting implementation or authorize right so we have some states and and these states help right but uh, define it first on a piece of paper or maybe somewhere and then uh, use uh, Jira and when you're using Jira you can definitely look at features like workflow conditions and validators and uh, post functions for example uh, condi workflow conditions in Jira talk about uh, things that should be true for you be to be able to make a transition for example if some some field is missing then you can't really s proceed further so you won't really see the option to approve or reject whatever uh, and when you want to make sure that during the transition you want to capture something you can do it using validators you may or may not need an additional app but if you're on Jira cloud you can definitely look at what post functions and validators and conditions you have now post function is nothing but what you want to do after you uh, transition for example if you reject a ticket then maybe you want to close the ticket but when you close it you want to update the, the, the resolution of the ticket to cancel right and I, and I believe uh, some of these templates will have this uh, ability or built-in feature but you don't really need to use it you can always customize it and this question keeps on coming that pe people want to ask can can I use uh, or am I limited to these templates or uh, which template is uh, is uh, relevant for my requirement I mean these templates are there for uh, uh, for you to get started but feel free to modify them and actually don't use templates because if you create a project with template you can mess up your Jira instance because you need to reuse these schemes or these templates or these workflows or any, or any customization because that is how you define the standards in Jira. Alright, that is it. That is all I wanted to talk about in this video. Uh, and by the way, if you want to learn about, uh, of course, workflows and uh, if you want to uh, learn about approval system, for example, I do have this video. Um, I mean, not just one video, but I have like a lot of videos on Jira. And I mean, I have more than 1000 videos, but especially if you want to learn about approval system in Jira, I actually showed it how you can achieve it um, here. For example, uh, I mean, I have plenty of videos, but I have this video where I showed how you can build a proper solid approval system using Scriptner. You don't even need to use uh, uh, Scriptner. You can do it uh, yourself if you really want. But uh, there are pl plenty of uh, ways of doing it. I mean, a workflow is nothing but like a state diagram that you can uh, create yourself in Jira. But if you, if you want to look at, if you're, if you're looking for some help, some help feel free to look at uh, my videos or just reach out to me. If you go to my website, ravisaga.in, there is a button called contact and you can then, you know, raise a ticket for me and uh, I will, I would be more than happy to help you. All right, that is it. That is all I wanted to talk about in this video. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and you learned something new. Thank you. Thank you very much.